Hi, this is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at the Silmar Agricultural Center, which is led by Steve List. And we're here with the Dave Wilson Nursery special guest speaker, Tom Spellman, that'll be talking about several educational gardening lessons to help make this your best growing season ever. Enjoy. Okay, so one shot. <laughs> Anyhow, welcome. My name's Steve List. I am the teacher here at Silmar High School. We're going to say this is the sixth annual fruit tree symposium am i correct <laughs> nobody knows we kind of lose count in our old age don't we <laughs> i'll say yes. i'm now huh I'll say you know? yes. six you always right six today. okay let's just say six and every year tom gets to speak right so far do we have you down for next year I, i'm hoping you might find somebody else no <laughs> <laughs> no we don't know anybody that has your expertise or your charisma so again i'm going to introduce wow. tom in a second but again my name is steve I teach here. Thank you all for coming. You know that not only is this a workshop for the fruit trees, but it's also a fundraiser for CRFG, and then they're going to help us with some goodies. Um, there's a lot of kids running around here, so take a little bit of time and say thank you and appreciate them. I have great students, and you know, there is hope in our world. The kids nowadays, they're not that bad. They really aren't. I think we were worse. <laughs> I know I was, that's for sure. I'm going to introduce a couple people that have booths out here. Then I'm going to introduce Tony, and he's going to introduce Tom. Does that sound okay? Or do you want me to talk for the rest of the time? No. I'll talk politics. Anyhow, I'd like to introduce Charles. Thank Charles? You. Charles has paint. What you do with that paint? I have no idea. No. Oh, um, sorry. See, that's good introduction, right? Well, firstly, um, thank you so much for all the good that you do. Um, such an amazing event. Last year was the first year I was here, and I was just blown away by everybody taking carloads of fruit trees uh, for such a nominal investment. And um, it's just such an amazing thing that he's got going on. I got to spend some time last summer with the students here, and we spent some time uh, whitewashing the trees in the um, in the orchard as well. And it was just such an educational moment for all of us. Um, I just want to share with you that the Ivory Organics products is an organic alternative to using paint on your fruit trees. Um, paint, as um, some of you know, is designed to basically last forever. You put it on your house, and, um, and it's supposed to be once and done. But if you put it on your fruit trees, your skin is changing itself on average once, once you know, a month or every other month. Your fruit tree, similarly, its bark is changing every year or two. So that paint you put on your fruit tree is not going to wind up in your soil and stay there forever. And that's basically where the Ivory Organics whitewash um, products were born. I've got about a handful of brochures I'd like to pass out and let's see where they end up. But even more important than these brochures are some handouts that are at our table that talk about university study benefits of whitewashing, both at the time of planting as well as um, for summer protection when you do summer pruning. It's another important time for whitewashing. Um, and our product also has these oils that naturally repel rodents and insects from girdling your trees, from boring into your trees, so on and so forth. There's a lot of benefits, a lot of testimonials that you'll find on our table, but let me put those brochures in your hand. And again, thank you so much, Steve, for this opportunity. That was awesome. Thank you, sir. You're a good thank man. You. Just don't invite me to your, from your lectures year. anymore. I will. You can count on it. <laughs> I'd like, to, I'd like to have a chance to go back and redeem myself. Uh, um, a couple other people I want to talk about, and then we'll introduce uh, Tony, who's going to introduce Tom. Uh, we have a lot of donations here. One big donation came from Ellie Cook. Bob Ludekins has been a good friend of mine for many, many years. He's getting very elderly now. His kids are my friends. So they gave us quite a bit of this material out here. They are no longer in business. So if you know any good fruit tree nurseries that wants to give away all their overstock, see where I'm going? I'll drive anywhere, but no. Yeah. Uh, Dave Wilson gave us 100 trees. That's a lot. <laughs> and my buddy Dan from Laverne Nursery. Anybody know where Laverne is? Yeah. It's up in Pyro. How many people have taken a tour there? Great. Uh, are you guys going to do it again? Hope so. Good. It's really nice. It's close, too. Dave Wilson, you got to go up to Hickman. Anybody know where Hickman is? Hickson. Ah, got one guy. I didn't know until I went there. So it's pretty nice up there. It's up by Yosemite. But anyway, I'd like, Dan, you want to say something? No, I'm happy to be here and answer any questions anybody's got. Yeah, he's probably, Dan Thanks doesn't like to speak questions. much, but he will answer questions. Today is a great day to ask questions about fruit trees. You got some of the best experts in the world here. And I'm not exaggerating. 
You know, these two guys know more than all of us put together, I think. And I'm not just being kind because you gave me the donation, but yes, I am. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to introduce the president of the Los Angeles chapter of CRFG. Let's give, let's give Tony a big hand. Thank you, sir. So Steve and I go back quite a ways, but my wife goes back to junior high school with Stephen, so we kind of, our paths met years and years later. So if you want any dirt, my wife's got it all, and I've, I've got quite a bit of dirt, so. We're all proud of Steve, though, and what he does here. Um, some of these trees started their life three and a half hours north, and four of us, five of us went up and bright and early dug up 600, 700 trees, literally dug up out of the, the hard, sandy, which I would think would be easy to dig up, but we found it wasn't. But we're able to bring back a great selection of it. Um, Tom was able to bring 100 trees from theirs. And the thing that's impressive is Steve comes back with three truckloads of trees. And in two weeks, he and his kids learn to root trim, pot them up, shows you know, how to properly train them. And we get the benefit of all that. So I think it's really great what he's doing with his kids. And, and uh, we love supporting them. It's a big fundraiser for us. And it all funnels right back to Steve. And I think having the next generation uh, it's amazing the quality of the kids that are here. They all walk up, I offer them something, they shake my hand, they introduce themselves, they say thank you. It's just a good quality of, of individuals that are coming through his program. So as Steve says, the next generation is, is uh, in good hands. With, um, our speaker, Tom, is gonna, is gonna I'm tempted to take these and these and, and hide them from him because we all gasp at his first thing he does. So I will leave them there. But. Tom, uh, we want to thank you for coming, and we can't get you a tree, we can't get you fruit, but we do have a basket of goodies for you. And I'm not sure how, but somewhere at my house, this was on my counter, so <laughs> I figured what better place to bring it than being here and say thank you. So Tom Spellens could talk to us about fruit trees and everything you want to know, and questions, he's the man. Tony, Tony. There's a gift there for were you not listening that I just thanked you? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just in an <laughs> <laughs> You were outside, Steve. You missed yeah, that. I better go back outside. I'm, I'm not giving up the that. Anyhow, you have another Felco there, so don't lose that. Awesome. You know, the philosophy is, number one, it's easier to keep a small tree small than to make a big tree small. Although it can be done, and it's done tens of thousands of times every year in commercial agriculture. But the philosophy on that is is lots of little cuts instead of a few really big cuts. So if you're working on it throughout the year, if I go in once a month and make a few little cuts here and there, I can keep that tree managed at a size that works for me all the time instead of having to go back in and do uh, medieval style pruning all at one time. So, and you know, if you are gonna do that, if you're making some big heavy cuts, you definitely wanna follow up with a whitewash. You don't wanna leave that green bark or that young tender wood, you know, exposed to sunburn damage. So sunburn protection comes into play, right, right after any kind of heavy pruning. But what we want to do is we want to consider when we're planting a young tree, say on this um, multi-budded apple, this is actually three apple or four apple varieties grafted onto one rootstock. So each one of these branches is a variety. Well, two of the varieties are our Anna, and Dorset Golden. Anna and Dorset Golden are varieties that break dormancy early, so they're already starting to put foliage on where these other, these other two are not. So Anna and Dorset Golden, in a combination, will always outgrow the other varieties. So for me, in a, in a tree like this, if I want to maintain all four of these varieties growing into this tree, I need to make sure that I'm growing the varieties at a balance. Well, right now, there's no balance. If I look at at this variety, which is uh, early summer red, it's only grown out about 18 inches. It's a pretty weak little graft, maybe a 16th of an inch in diameter, where the, the dorset and the anna are probably uh, half inch or 5 eighths inch in diameter, and they're, they're three times as high. So if I were to plant this tree like this right now, these two varieties are going to dominate the combination. Within a year, I'm probably going to lose the other two. Now I can't make this wheat variety grow out a whole lot faster, but I can check the vigor on these aggressive varieties and make them grow slower. So that's what I really have to do in a situation like this in order to achieve balance. So I want to, first of all, I want to look at my weakest variety on the tree. And then I want to bring 
my aggressive varieties back down in perspective. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that. Yeah, I told you we were going to all go, all go, all go. <laughs> so that's that right there. Th those are the hardest cuts that you'll ever make. Nobody <laughs> wants to do that. But they'll call me in two years and complain that the multi-budded tree that they bought is now only one or two varieties because they were afraid to make that cut. They were afraid to check the vigor on the, on the aggressive varieties. But that's what you have to do to achieve balance. I'm going to be pruning these two or three times throughout the year where I'm probably going to let this one go and I'm probably not going to do much to this. I can bring this one back down a little bit. Then I've got this growth that's coming in toward the center. I've got all this aggressive growth on the uh, dorset gold. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up that center. I want to remove that growth so that I have some light exposure and some air movement in toward the center of the tree. That's going to give me a better ripening ability for the, for the fruit that sets. It's also going to give me a nice restructured open vase shape to this tree. So I'm always looking at keeping that center open and keeping these other varieties in check and in, in balance with the weak varieties. So I'm gonna come back in here and make a couple of other pinches here. And now, now that variety is pretty much set to a balance. So the next thing I'm gonna consider on this when I plant this variety is I want strong varieties to face north, northeast. I want weak varieties to face south southwest so when this tree goes in the ground it's going to go in the ground like that i want these varieties to get the benefit of the doubt on, on afternoon exposure on that that afternoon sunlight and these varieties won't need it because they're going to grow more aggressively anyway but the other consideration is since these varieties break dormancy a month earlier than these other two if i were to angle these varieties to the south southwest they're going to be shading out these varieties before they even get a chance to grow out. So you want to make sure that you not only have vigor to the north and northeast, but you also have early varieties to the north and northeast. That will always allow you to maintain a better balance on that tree. So if I were to have made this cut down a little lower, then I'd be getting growth coming back in toward the center again. So I'm making my cut at a bud that grows outward. So that way my next flush of growth is going to be open vase shape. I don't want to tangle up the center, I want to bring it out. So as this grows out, I'll get some growth in here, but I'm going to remove that in favor of all this growth that grows on the outside. So I want that open center shape. I typically will not allow a tree to produce fruit the first year in the ground, sometimes second year in the ground. And varieties like Anna and Dorset, they'll, you know, they'll definitely, I mean, you look, look at this, look. Things loaded with flowers. So. This could have potentially produced 30 or 40 fruit. And if that happens, you lose 80% of the growth potential of the tree for that year. It's going to ripen up 30 fruit the size of a quarter, and you're not going to get any growth or establishment. I'm okay losing fruit the first year or even the first two years to gain structure and manageability. And citrus too. Citrus too, exactly. Fortunately, most varieties aren't as aggressive or as precocious as Anna and Dorset Golden, and they're probably not going to do that. If you put in a Fuji or a, a Gala or a, you know some of the other varieties of apple, you're not you're not going to get fruit the first year anyway. If you plant most citrus, you're not going to get fruit the first year anyway. Meyer lemon, probably an exception, would would get, want to give you fruit right away, but you know I, I don't want to lose 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 percent of my growth potential for a handful of fruit for the first year. Yes? Doesn't the, the bark in the tree uh, get burned by the sun when it doesn't have so many leaves? The, there's definitely the potential for sunburn. That's why we talked about whitewash earlier. So if I was gonna plant this tree today, the first thing I would do is whitewash any of the structure that faced that south-southwest. And if you're aggressively pruning a tree to an open center style, you want to protect all that growth or all that, that bark that's exposed to the southwest. So sunburn in Southern California is a must. If you're not sunburn protecting your trees, you could definitely be losing trees or have trees that are, that are weak uh, in response to that sun. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially subtropical material, especially avocados. 
Avocados absolutely have to be whitewashed. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, whitewash should be part of your basic maintenance routine for any type of fruiting material. Uh, just something that, you know, and all you want to do is get a light coat of protection on there. I don't want it to look like a picket fence. I just want a nice light coat on there that's going to protect against sun damage for that first season. And you can, you can have sun damage in a matter of a couple of days. If I took an avocado that's, you know, say um, uh, Laverne Nursery growing avocados can tight in north-south rows, those trees are, each row is shading the next row, each tree is shading the next tree. So all of a sudden that tree gets pulled out of the nursery row and sent to a, a retail nursery and picked up. And now I take it out and set it out in the middle of a yard where it gets 100% sun exposure. Well, now you've opened that tree up to damage immediately. So the day you plant a tree should be the day you whitewash that tree. You can get damage in a very short period of time. Yeah. Last year I was able to talk to Charles about his product that he has out here that's a whitewash. Exactly. Thing, and that's yeah. a great application where I had really great success. I hadn't been doing it enough and having a chance to talk with him and get a, uh, his product really worked well on my tree. So. I, 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 I trialed this product yeah. um, after actually after this meeting last year. Yeah, it worked very well. It was a good thing. Talk to him afterwards. Yeah. So those of you that are concerned with whitewash, there's your man to see. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, for the most part, it'll recover. You may it may compartmentalize. You may lose a branch or two branches, you know, that were really center exposed to that sun damage. But you know, that's you can just rejuvenate those. How long did you know? Did you in the first year, yeah, you'll see the you'll see the bark damage. You know, and, and it's typical that the, always. The bark damage from sunburn always faces the, the hottest part of the afternoon sun. So that southwest face, if you look at the southwest face and that you see that blackening and that damage and that cracking on the bark, that's, that's sunburn. It's very, very common on, on unprotected trees and southern trees. You know, after all, this all this is is a desert that we brought water to. Yeah. So it, it, get, it gets, uh, it can get pretty nasty in the summertime. Only takes a short period of time to do sunburn. Okay, anything else? All right, let's move on. So as long as we're pruning, we might as well take a look at this Snow Queen Nectarine. Uh, Snow Queen is an old, old uh, John Armstrong variety. Goes back to... Uh... If you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivory Organics, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening. Yeah.